Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Science with Shinrai Sensei in our Better Together at Science series. Now, today, like I spoke last week, uh, we are going to be covering stars and kind of go further in depth into fusion and how fusion and gravity compete to create these entities that are so necessary to our understanding of the universe that we call stars, right? And they're also necessary for our own, you know, existences because, obviously, our sun is a star and it generates all the necessary heat and electromagnetic energy that is necessary for our entire planet to have life on it. But, let's go over how stars are the ultimate battleground. And they're the ultimate battleground between two forces that really don't seem like they would be in opposition, but they really are. And that is, stars are the ultimate battleground between gravity and fusion, right? So, stars are obviously what we know about stars from a basic standpoint, super basic understanding. Stars are a um, gigantic ball of plasma. And that plasma is superheated and super energized gas particles, basically. So plasma, the best way to think of plasma is that while science has basically come to the understanding now that plasma is the fourth, um, the fourth uh, state of matter, right? Like liquid, gas, uh, solid, and plasma. Uh, really, plasma is just super energized gas. It is... If it's just a gas or gaseous form, and it could also be a liquid, but it's it's just super energized particles that flow. So they're theoretically, depending on the pressure that the star ex is exuding on itself, and in the case of like neutron stars, it could be a solid. This is why it is the fourth state of matter, but typically a plasma will be in a more gaseous environment in most stars because... It, at least towards the outer shell of the star. In the inner core of the star, the plasma will be in various states. And so this is why the pl this is why plasma is its own thing, is really you could create a whole different three categories of matter based on plasma, like plasma gas, plasma liquid, plasma solid, right? But at the end of the day, we just decided to call it plasma and recognize it as its own state of matter no matter what form it takes and no matter how similar it looks to a form that we already know we're just going to go ahead and call it plasma that way it's easier right but this plasma is the result of nuclear fusion now nuclear fusion for those of you who maybe didn't watch the last episode or for those of you just you know uh not really 100 percent sure nuclear fusion is when you take two atoms and you smash them together into a new atom. Okay? So when you smash two helium or two hydrogen atoms together, you get a helium atom. When you get two helium atoms smashed together, you get uh whatever the fourth element is. Sorry, I'm not 100% uh 100% familiar with the periodic table, but when you get, you know, hi, you know, hydrogen atoms combine into helium, a hydrogen and a helium will combine into lithium. Uh, you get two lithium atoms combined to form carbon, I think is number six. It's either carbon or oxygen. I want to say it's carbon. Uh, but you have nuclear fusion creates new elements from existing elements, yes, but they create new elements. And it's the battle between gravity and fusion because gravity is necessary for fusion in a star. But fusion is also creating a newer... It's creating particles that are heavier. And so gravity ends up killing the star because gravity ends up beating the fusion out. Right? So that's what leads to stars dying, typically, is <clears throat> gravity ends up winning. Right? So, what do I mean by that? Well, fusion in a star, in a healthy star, a healthy star
Fusion is com uh, combining helium, or sorry, hydrogen. So in a healthy star, it's hydrogen fusion, right? So hydrogen is being fused together to form helium in a healthy star. In middle-aged stars and in older stars, you start to see, because the helium supply directly in the core is running low, mostly because of the fact that gravity starts to coalesce the heavier particles towards the core, right? So the heavier, the heavier particles will gravitate towards the core because the heavier particles want to be at the lowest point and the lighter particles are going to get pushed out of the way by the heavier particles coming in, right? So if I have, you know, in the form of liquids, it's easier to see because you can see which uh, liquids are denser and which ones are made of heavier materials, right? So if I have heavy water versus normal water, heavy water has extra, <clears throat> has um, extra hydrogen atom, if I remember correctly. And uh, so it's H3O rather than H2O, right? That H3O, if you pour heavy water and normal water into a beaker, the initial mixture, if you obviously, you need to be able to see the microscopic level, but the initial mixture will be rather even, but eventually over time, the H3O will settle towards the bottom and the H2O will settle towards the top because the H3O is heavier and denser and wants to be closer to the source of gravity. And so the same thing happens in stars, right? So a healthy star will burn hydrogen and will continue to burn hydrogen. And when I say burn hydrogen, I mean smashing hydrogen atoms together rather than smashing heavier particles together, right? But <clears throat> hydrogen eventually in the core will become scarce because heavier atoms will move into the core from large, uh, and this will become more common, right? So the helium atoms will eventually become more populous in the core than the hydrogen atoms will because the hydrogen atoms are less dense and less heavy, so they won't be towards the center of gravity as much as the helium will. And the helium, when they start to coalesce in the core, the helium starts to get smashed together because of gravity, and then the, you know, whatever the fourth element is, that gets smashed together into oxygen. And then from there, it keeps going and going and going. And the one thing to remember about stars, iron is a star killer. At least from what most sources I've read anyway, and most sources I've heard, Iron is very typically, when iron starts to become present in the core of a star, is usually in the final, in the final period of the star's life. The star has entered its death cycle, basically. When iron starts to show up in a star's core, it is going to die. That is pretty much it. And once again, the iron is such a heavy particle, it will coalesce to the core and displace whatever lighter particles are in its way. And eventually the iron will be forced together, forced together, forced together. But the amount of energy that it takes for the star to smash iron together, two irons together, is going to be larger than the amount of energy that it is getting out of that reaction. See, the smaller particles generate more reaction than they uh, take to smash together, right? There's more energy coming out of a reaction between two hydrogens than there is between two irons, right? So if I just take two hydrogens and smash them together, they're going to generate more energy because there's less uh, particle mass to absorb the energy that's coming out. Whereas the energy will be slightly absorbed by larger and larger particles and the energy will be stored within these particles whether it be in the form of like neutrons or, you know, electrons going loose and getting, you know, making a ion, uh, you know, possible for other atoms, you're going to have these larger atoms will slightly absorb the energy that they're creating. And the smaller atoms can't absorb that 
energy that they're creating as well. So you end up having a huge um, imbalance between the amount of energy created and the amount of energy, well, not created, but the amount of energy released versus the amount of energy that is needed to conduct the reaction. And another reason why there needs to be more energy to conduct the reaction is because of how heavy iron is. So the gravity, anybody can say, oh yeah, gravity is a weak force. And you're going to have, you know, astrophysicists say this all the time. But at the end of the day, gravity is the reason stars die. Gravity defeats fusion every time. That's why stars stay into a form. And that's why stars eventually die is because the gravity holds that mass all together and the gravity continues that fusion reaction. Fusion, if it was just happening in the wild, right? Fusion would completely cease to, ex uh, cease to exist after a short while. Whereas in the case of gravity, gravity is always trying to coalesce things together. It's trying to bring everything together. Uh, fusion is trying to well, because of the violent reaction that fusion is, it will push things apart. So fusion is an explosion, right? And gravity is trying to hold that explosion in. Well, eventually, when the particles get too heavy, the amount of explosive force between two between a fusion reaction is rather constant. Whereas the amount of energy needed to push these atoms apart and continue their flow in the plasma system of a star needs to get higher as these elements get heavier. They need to have more explosive force to push them apart. Think of it like uh, if you have an explosion where you, you, you set up a firecracker, right? And you put it in a little dinky dish of sand and just a fine dusting of sand just enough to cover the top of that firecracker, right? You like the firecracker, all the sand that's on top of it is going to go flying and it's going to leave a little crater where the firecracker was and all the sand that was on top of the firecracker is gone. It's flown, it's flown off somewhere. You're going to have a really hard time finding that sand. But now I bring a big old bucket. I bring a big bucket. I fill it with sand halfway. Then I put the firecracker in. Then I fill it the rest of the way with sand again. Now I light that firecracker's fuse it explodes. All it's going to do is lightly displace that sand because the amount of sand that is there and the weight of the sand that is there. A better example would be taking that light layer of sand, replacing it with, let's say, pebbles, right? Or full-blown rocks. The rocks aren't going to move as easily as the sand is. So this fusion reaction generates a flow of particles inside the star that gravity disrupts when it starts to get too big of particles in there because gravity starts to push these particles in towards the center and when they go in towards the center the fusion reactions cease to flow as well and the core compresses on itself because heavier elements like iron will try to get towards the center all the time so fusion and gravity are always in a constant battle in stars and like i said stars are the ultimate battleground and gravity always wins. That's the one thing for gravity being as weak a force as science wants to say that it is, because it's not really a force, according to our understanding of general relativity due to um, Albert Einstein's theory and our observations from Alfred Hummel, sorry, Hubble, not Hummel, uh, Mr. Hubble helped Alfred, uh, Albert Einstein go ahead and prove that his theory was correct about gravity and that gravity is the result of the warping of the fourth dimension around objects, which is what we feel as the sense of gravity is actually a displacement that causes us to move towards whatever is causing the displacement. So, the simple fact of the matter is, for gravity being a weak force, it always wins. So, I'll go ahead and write that up here, and you guys can take a screenshot of this at any time, but gravity always wins. Gravity always wins. Stars always die because gravity always wins.
That's simply put how it goes. Neutron stars are the result of gravity compressing all of the um, all of the neutrons in the star together and all these super heavy elements together and until literally a neutron star is a solid rock. If you were able to withstand the temperature and withstand the radioactivity of a neutron star to stand, and obviously the gravity, to stand on a neutron star's surface, one, you'd be surprised that the neutron star probably is smaller than, like, the moon, smaller than maybe even Pluto, depending on, you know, depending on the neutron star you're going to see. You'll be surprised at how incredibly small it is. But also, you'll be surprised that it is pretty much solid because of the fact that gravity won. Gravity won, the radioactivity is there, the uh, star's energy is being released in this really weird way that, you know, science is super intrigued by, and obviously the rotation of that star is out of this world. Like, how many rotations per second you're talking about for a neutron star? Uh, it seems like it shouldn't even be possible. But neutron stars are the ultimate, uh, right next to black holes, okay? Neutron stars are just basically the core of the star is all that's left. And it's just pumping out energy, spinning super fast, and just absolutely insane. But gravity always wins because you can see it in black holes, you can see it in neutron stars, and even supernova, which we would think is not a, because it's an explosion, right? What we think of as an explosion. It's actually not an explosion. It's because the core of the star is getting so densely packed, and all that energy is having so much trouble escaping that it's kind of getting trapped by the heavier particles of this, this core. And eventually, that energy will have to escape sometime after so much energy builds up inside of the core it will have to escape sometime and eventually it does escape and that's what you see as the supernova the energy gets trapped in the core because the core is too dense to allow the energy to escape and eventually after so much time the core will eventually shed that energy and in the process it will push all of the outer shell of the star that's not the core away and usually it will rip the core apart in the process the core will literally explode because it's trying to trap all that energy gravity is holding all that energy in until eventually the star just boom gone because gravity won and gravity will win again because gravity forms the next part of the process which is what we call accretion which is where the stars are formed from the uh the remains of another star the gaseous cloud that is left after a supernova that uh we call a nebula right the gaseous remains of an of an, another supernova which is called a nebula is going to form the next star because gravity will attract the star in uh, gravity will attract particles into coalescing to become a new star. I know this episode ran a little longer. Uh, I really hope you guys stuck with me to the end here. I uh, obviously I really enjoy talking about you know science and I have off the cuff knowledge of a lot of this stuff. Uh, if you do have any questions or want me to go further in depth on any of this stuff, please let me know in the comments section below. And uh, feel free to take a screenshot at any time if this is going to help you in your schoolwork or if you're just really curious and you like to have this knowledge, take a screenshot at any time of the board. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.